folks, how are we doing? Are we ready for another chat? But this one is going to be about abundance and manifestation with a little bit of, oh, actually not a little bit, with a lot of alchemy in it. Have I ever done a video on abundance? I don't think I have. Not not, not anything on YouTube. I, don't, I will have waffled on, on Instagram, Healing for Ascension, but I don't think I've ever done a big, a big one like this. Anyway, I want to try and keep this as informal as possible, even though I do have notes written down. Um, I want to try and get the energy of having a chat rather than anything other that seems, I don't know, just a casual circle of people and people being myself and you to think about all aspects of abundance and manifestation and our relationship with money. And a lot of what I'm going to be talking about is stuff that I've experienced myself. You can go onto online, social media, YouTube. There's loads on abundance, um, loads of it on a manifestation. But the sad thing is what happens, what tends to happen with it is we read it, but then we can't understand it or we get, it just seems too good to be true. And I remember being like that and thinking, nah, and actually being a bit ick by some of it as well, feeling a bit ick. Um, and that feeling a bit ick can be a past life stuff, maybe your generational stuff, what your parents thought of money, what grandparents thought of money, what people thought of money that you don't even know about. Um, great grandparents, great grandparents, great, 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 great grandparents. Okay. Um, and further back than that, and I was thinking about this video a lot on holiday because we paid for, we, we, we used to love cruising, me and Gary, we loved, you, you, probably many of you by the time you see this will have seen the last video we've done on the, on the last vlog, which is the cruise, which worked out very different to how we thought, but actually was the gift that kept on giving because by the time it, at the end of the video, at the end of the holiday, we realised that we wanted a different holiday. We've changed, cruising's definitely changed, we've definitely changed, and where we put the abundance needs to change as well. And there was all various things, I got a virus, then Gary got the virus when he got back, I think. Yeah, he got, well, did he get it on holiday or when he got back? I can't remember. Anyway, I know there was so much I promised in that video. Next, tomorrow I'm gonna do an unhaul of my anniversary stuff I never did because I just got ill. And I just concentrated on self-care and doing a little bit of casual filming. Um, but it really made me think about money. I then didn't realise that this week I'm going to be channeling Barbara Hutton, who was the Woolworths heiress, and she was known as Poor Little Rich Girl. And I actually put some, for the first time ever in a channeling, no, second time actually, I did it once with Diana, and said, do you guys want to ask Barbara Hutton some questions? And I swear to you, I'd already written up this stuff here. And one of the things that, one of the sayings, and I'm going to come back to this, one of the sayings that we must never say in relation to money is money is the root of all evil. And one of the questions was like that. And it was like, it was a couple. And I remember sat there thinking, oh my God. Um, because obviously she had a lot of money. She had, it was a story of tragedy and heartbreak and all that kind of stuff. And we see a lot of those stories, but if I told you that it's actually not money that causes that, what does that feel? And I, and I thought, shall I mention that, what that person said in that, I'm not judging it, because I probably would have said that myself at one point, money is the root of all evil. Oh, I, I used to feel like that money is a sin, you know. Whew. But every time you say that, we put that out into the universe. So the universe goes, okay then, you don't like money, straight away. And actually, Barbara's life had nothing to do with money. And I think we're going to find out more about that tomorrow, but moving away from Barbara. Um, why am I filming this? Self-empowerment. We live in a world now where we're going to have to come back to self-empowerment. And we're going to have to do it in some cases slowly, but in some cases really quickly. You may find something comes in really quickly and you have to stand on your own two feet in some way, shape or form. And actually to understand that we are the alchemists of our own destiny. And the more that the energy and the earth changes, the more that that will come into play. That being an alchemist doesn't mean so you've got lots of little chemicals bubbling in front of you. It's the mind, how the mind works, what we say in our speech, our actions, 
That's all. Everything we say is alchemy. Everything we think is alchemy. Alchemy? Everything we do is alchemy. So it's got to be important, whether it's our health, our well-being, our abundance, that we're using the right type of, we're saying the right type of things, we're doing the right type of things, and we're aligning to the right type of things. Before I go any further, this video isn't about manifesting a five-bedroomed house or a mansion or an Audi or a BMW or a Mercedes. It's manifesting your healthy relationship with money. And my focus will be on humbleness, but healthy humbleness. A lot of the manifestation out there is all about get that big fat car, get that big fat house, etc. You know, get that bling jewellery, get that, get that, more, more, more. And actually, that the reason why that gives me the ick is because we're going into a world that that isn't going to benefit you. More, 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 faster car, faster car, bigger house, bigger house. Um, <clears throat> my throat is still croaky after the virus on that cruise ship. I shit you not. I have never been on holiday and experienced what I experienced on that cruise ship. That we, we, when we start, when we started to embark, I'm not joking when I say the cruise ship we went on takes about three thousand people and it was full. And I'd say about on, on embarkation day when we were checking in, I'd say there were about ooh, twenty. 20 to 30% of people wearing masks, but not just wearing masks, coughing all over the place. And I remember sat there thinking, oh my God. And I know you don't go into fear, but when you're on a little immune system and you've got 3,000 people, but it wasn't just that, it was like literally, I don't know what had happened. I don't know what it was, but literally everyone that stepped onto that ship was coughing, spluttering. And it, we've got a really bad virus from it and it's taken weeks to shift, even though I've raked the shit out of myself. And I actually managed to have a good holiday by raking myself, but the lasting effects of it have really affected my throat. So <clears throat> that all the time. It's not as bad as it was last week. Anyway, moving on, Claire, you bore the shit out of me. Um, so some simple basic techniques and basic mindsets that can bring long lasting change and comfort, especially in the present environment and the present world that we go in there's a there's a phraseology going around at the minute i don't usually say it but i'm going to have to say it for this video cost of living crisis okay the amount of people and i understand why they say it can go on and on and on about the cost of living crisis and they keep saying there's a cost of living crisis there's a cost of living crisis etc 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 i understand for many people it's packing a punch i do get that but every time you say those words, especially the word crisis, it's almost like planting seeds. You're planting them. Not only are you planting them, you're putting them in the earth. You're watering them. You provided them with the right, correct amount of sun, right, correct soil. <coughs> you're manifesting it. So the more that we do that and the more that we talk about, I'm not talking about sitting down and getting your finances in order I'm talking about just gossiping about it and going on and focusing on the cost of living crisis and going into fear about it and this is where the trigger can come in because you know you'll get someone will say well it's really affecting me I get that but this is where your alchemy has to come in and it's where we have to really dig deep into some of the most conditioned mindsets that we have within ourselves are in relation to money and sex, of good girls don't do that, no sex before marriage, and all of that kind of stuff. So these are really ingrained in you, especially if you've had ancestors that have been in poverty, if they've been in the workhouse. For example, I had a grandfather that was put in a workhouse as a child, and he, as an older man, would then, he was actually had quite a lot of money for the time that he was living in, but towards the end of his life, because he'd been put in the workhouse as a little boy, he he just went frugal, like proper screwed frugal, and he'd redo his he'd reuse his tea bags and have them hung up. So that past gets passed on to you without you even realizing it, and it will be the same for you. And I'm looking down because I've, I've written some notes. Our attitude to money, receiving wealth, and how that can affect kind of the propel us forward or hold us back. If I said to you, you look beautiful today, some people are like, oh, I know, fine. Some people may go, no, I don't. 
no I don't, no I don't, I'm fat. Oh no, no, my hair's awful actually. I'd, actually, no, no, it's an awful top. This is a second hand top or it used to be mum's or it used to be this. Oh no, I don't look. Honestly, we've all been there. So again, abundance is about compliments as well. It's about receiving goodness. If a really decent man or a really decent woman came into your life and you're single, you would be surprised at the amount of people that will go, on some level, because you're too nice. It's too good to be true. I'm not talking about the smarmy narcs, by the way. I'm talking about the genuine ones. Um, and people not valuing themselves more. So they, <clears throat> they don't want to get paid for the work they do, especially in spiritual communities. There is a lot of people making mega bucks in the spiritual community. Mark my words. But there's also many people, I won't charge for readings. I don't charge for healing. I don't charge for that. And then they come to me and they go, Claire, I'm really ill. I'm energy zapped. I've got no, I, ca I can't heal anymore. I can't do the readings anymore. Well, you know, why? I don't know. It's just, my clients just take so much out of me, Claire. Why? Well, they're knocking me up out of bed. They're, they're always needed here. Why? Because you don't charge. You've not put out to the universe that you are worthy. When you charge for your services and you charge a good price, and I made this mistake when I first set up and it backfired brilliantly in a big way, you put out to the universe, I am not worthy. You will also attract in the energy vampires. You will attract in people that do not want to help themselves. Free reading? You bet your boots I'm in. Free haircut? You bet your boots I'm in. You'll do me electrics for free? You bet your boots I'm in. Oh, I'll put my hand up to that. Oh, you'll bake me a wedding cake for free? Thank you. Energy vampires. Because actually, the correct balance is that there should always be an exchange. So you may be a hairdresser, you may be a beautician, you may be working in a job that's really low pay and you're struggling with that. You may also be working in a job with low pay and you're abundant. Because you can, two different people can be but different depending on where they're at. So valuing yourself, this, this leads into relationships, friendships. Does, does your tribe lift you up? Do you have healthy, balanced relationships and friendships? The community that you live in as well. There is a trigger here. Like attracts like. Every, like I've said, everything I'm talking about I've experienced when you are in the gutter, you attract the gutter. When you have a lack of self-confidence, you will attract in the people that want to take advantage of that. When you, There was once a test, and I, it frustrates me, because at the time when I read about it, I, I didn't do this work then, so I didn't take any note of it, I just read it. And it was, they did a test where they sent two women down a stream. And one of these women was a super confident, self-made woman. She had money, she had everything and she knew her worth and the other woman was a really weak woman and she didn't have a lot of money she had all kinds of issues going on they'd volunteered to do this test and what they did was they sent them down the street and they filmed them walking down the street and the confident woman with the, all this self-empowerment walked down head held high and people were smiling at her people were nodding at her people were moving to let her through she sailed down that street. They sent the woman down then with all the issues and people bumping into her. People were not seeing her. People were looking at her. People were mocking her. And I think it just went on and on and on. And it was like that just when I when I when I when I read it, I was like, that is a game changer. And there was so much in that. So your self-worth. You know, you are worthy. And I know that's a bit cliched and Jesus, you know, I'm worthy, but you are. And until we actually understand that. Also as well, if we have a lot of confrontation in our life, we have to look at the confrontation within ourselves Because remember that everything is a mirror. So what confrontation is going on within yourself? Are you at peace within your body? Because if you're not at peace within your body, confrontation comes in again, being there, done that experience state. You know, people that can't leave their house, by the end of the day, they've had this argument, that bit of real rage, boyfriends walked out on them, next door neighbours told them to get gone, etc. They had a running with skilled teacher, kids have slammed the door and everyone's just pissed them off. Why? Why? 
And that was well, that was a bouncer that once told me that in a training session. It was a training class I went on when I was a dental nurse. And he says that throughout his career as a bouncer and then as a teacher, because it was a, what course was it? I went on, it was about self-defence course. And he was actually talking to people about your attitude. Because if you go out there with that on, you'll attract that. If you go out angry and fuming and rawr, you'll attract that. And this, this was years of experience. I've been watching this on the doors and in hospitals, etc. So it's about what you put out there. If you already leave your front door in the morning, you're fragmented. By the time you come back in at five o'clock, you're just going to be all over the place. You're going to be a mess, shit show. Um, so... This, I've done a list of sayings that hold us back and a list of sayings that propel us forward. Listen to the difference. I can't afford that. Money is the root of all evil. That's too posh for me. I'm all right as I am. Shall I read them again? I can't afford that. Money is the root of all evil. That's too posh for me. I'm all right as I am. See, even my voice at that. So the same quotes, I've done the positive ones. So when I said, I can't afford that, this is the alternative. I'd love that. I will save up for it and allow space in my life for it. Do you see the difference? I love that. I want that. I will save up for it and allow space in my life for it. See the difference from, I can't afford that. So, money is the root of all evil. Money opens many doors and gives many choices. Listen to it again. Money is the root of all evil. Two, money opens many doors and gives many choices. That's too posh for me. Wow, I'm worth it and I belong here. I'll say that again. That's too posh for me. Wow. I'm worth it and I belong here. I'm all right as I am, as opposed to, I'm open to change and spontaneity. So in all of those, those four new sayings that I've done, there is still protection there for yourself. Because even the first one, you're not just gonna go out and blast it on the credit card, which again can be a sign of lack of abundance when we're overspending. But at the same time, you've said to the universe, I want that. And I'm going to make space in it. And that could come in via a gift. You know, when people say, I'd love a reading with you, Claire. I can't afford it. I, oh, I like cringe. And sometimes I'll, oh, I don't have time. Well, I do have a lot of, well, some, I find sometimes I'm trying to make more time for comments and not just like them and love at them. But for not just about me, I mean, reading with me, but you know, if I, if I show a crystal or I once showed some books and that I'd bought a big book haul, it was big fat juicy book haul, and it came in, it came in. I can't afford those books, Claire. Wish I could. And I was like, oh, please, because actually, you can, you can, because you even if you can't afford it, we've got charity shops, we've got libraries, we've got online libraries, we've got friends, we've got everything in the world you we've got wish lists on amazon how many times does someone come to you and say what do you want for your birthday what do you want for christmas and i, I know i we we grew up with, with you know, i grew up on benefits not my mum and dad grew up, my mum and dad were on benefits so i obviously grew up in a benefit household it wasn't always like that but we would use our birthday monies for things like that my mum would use her birthdays and so it wasn't a case of i can't afford that she made changes so at some point you can and then you appreciate things more if that makes sense so when you see something you even if it's a deck of terror never say you can't afford that you can afford that you can even if you have to save one pound a month you can afford that even if you have to go on to ebay and get a second hand box and never say i can't afford that because you're not just putting that saying out for that thing. You're putting that out for everything. And then we start to loop. So what factors can cause these issues that we all have with money? Generational stuff. So your ancestors, maybe they were in the workhouse. You know, it was, <clears throat> there was a lot of generational stuff around 
poverty and around money. Society, maybe you have an issue with elite people, people do. Now, a weird issue with elite people. And I did this with the coronation and it, when I was doing the notes for this, it was pointed out to me. Oh, coronation, why are we having another coronation? We just had, this was me, actual footage. Oh, we've just had jubilee, oh, right? We just had to pay for a jubilee. Then we had to pay for a funeral. Now we're having to pay for a coronation. Mm, moan, moan, moan. Okay, God, did I say that? Yes, you did, Claire. Why not be thankful that you're actually in a country that can afford all of that? Ah, yes, Claire, but look at what's happening in the NHS. Do you know something? These services have always struggled. And again, do they really struggle? Why are they struggling? Um... Also, as well, looking at the gift that those, well, obviously not the funeral. Well, the, the funeral was a gift for many people in as far as it helped. I mean, I know a lot of my clients at the time and watchers said that things in relation to grandmothers dying and mothers dying came up when the Queen died. But thinking about how the street parties and communities, it was actually a chance for abundance because abundance isn't about money. It's about community. It's about friendship. It's about love. It's about physical tactile touch it's about sexuality it's about happiness so when we've got abundance blocks it's not just money blocks we've got we've got blocks with all of those and it's about making peace with that why do you not feel lovable why do you not want to be intimate why do you not want a nice house why do you not want a clean house why do you not want a healthy loving relationship why do we not want a nice holiday. Why do we not want to treat ourselves to a facial? Why do we not want to treat ourselves to some new makeup? We have to sit with that and we have to trace it back and make peace with it. Um, life and traumas. So if you've gone through many traumas in life and life's been difficult, you lose your mojo. You lose your confidence in putting yourself out there. If you've been bullied and ridiculed and abused, and I say to you, me and you, baby girl, we are going to go to Ritz for afternoon tea. That's one of my aims, by the way. Me and you, baby girl, we're going to go to Ritz for afternoon tea. I can't, I can't, Claire, I can't. Because the minute I mention the Ritz and that poshness and that money and walking in those swirly doors, it's like, I can't do it because all I can hear is the words of my school bullies or the words of that ex-boyfriend or the words of that ex-wife or the words of my parent or grand or whatever it was that gave you those words you're unworthy or you think you're this you're that you're the other and actually they're just words and yes they run deep but that needs to be healed as well maybe you've had loss maybe you've lost your home maybe you've had so loss can knock your confidence if you've lost your home if you've lost your car if you've lost your child if you've lost somebody dear to you and then somebody says you know it's time to get back out to the world and feel again and embrace it can just feel fill you with full of dread so it's about getting the healing for the loss which we then come to bereavement which comes under loss as well so <clears throat> all of these different things can really tie us up in knots Genuine £10 notes, okay? Genuine £10 notes. So this can get me anything I want up to the cost of £10. I can save it if I want and turn it into 20 I can carry on saving it and turn it into 30 and etc. There is nothing evil about that, is there? Look, it's not doing anything. It's not doing anything. It's, well, it's not paper anymore, is it? Is it plastic? I don't know what it is in the UK. It's just an object. It's just an object like that. Frequencies may be different, but are they really? It's just an object. iPhone. It's just an object. It's not evil. Money is not the root of all evil. Here we get the catch. What people do is the root of all evil. There is nothing evil, bad, dark, heavy about that. It's what man or humans do with it. You can get some rich people that do amazing things with money. They live amazing lives and they are real good guardians of the earth. They serve their communities. They live good lives. 
they leave a great legacy and people remember them forever and they've got money and power you can get the opposite it's not the money that causes it it's a defunct thing within them that causes it and we have to heal that so healing your relationship with how you view the rich so also as well when you see somebody doing really well which can be a huge trigger when maybe you're not doing well and this cannot you know this doesn't have to be about money this could be you know you, you said well let's start with money so your sister comes in and she says we've just got a house it's the five bedroom house that we've been wanting we've worked hard for our lives or maybe she's popped in her. maybe she's married mr mr Moneybags, right and it's, it's just come to her and you're on the bread line that is that is even though you may not want to admit to it, it's going to draw something up but actually by having that draw up you've got to sit with that and heal that within yourself because when somebody comes in and they say i've got a really nice house it's five bedrooms it's this it's got garden it's going to open doors to us when you go <laughs> like that what you do to the universe you say that up to the universe and the universe goes better not give her that because actually look and it can't come in it can't come in because you're blocking it it's like a brick wall in your energy field and it can't come in it's to say i remember this and again many people before i did got engaged met people i was a late starter and i remember thinking when people got married and i looped 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 and actually you shouldn't i don't have children and i when i found when i realized that maybe that wasn't going to happen i thought i don't want to be that woman that nobody dares say they're pregnant to because that is not classy when somebody says to you I'm pregnant and you don't have children or can't have children and they end up feeling bad because they've just told and it ends up where you have a little tear and all of that and all that drama and people say don't don't tell Claire that you're pregnant oh god oh god heaven forbid I can't even deal with it to calm it down who wants to be that woman so it's about being happy for people it's about healing those core wounds so it leaves us open to celebrate other people's abundance and joy but also to receive as well because don't forget the minute you go you you stiffen up your body stiffens up there's a lot of facial expressions today the minute you go and you tense up and you look and you don't and you all tensed and stressed all day energy can't flow it's almost like i don't know i'll try to think of an analogy it's like having a jar but wanting to fill the jar full of water but you've got your lid on the top and you're running up the, and you put it under the water under the tap and you're like why is it not filling because you've got the lid on you've blocked it so the minute that we go like that oh they're married and i'm not oh they've had a baby and i'm not oh god they've got that job and i'm not my god they've got a million subscribers and i haven't it blocks it it blocks it and it doesn't just block that it blocks what is actually meant for you because you may not be meant for a five bedroom house but there may be a great house waiting for you around the corner that may be abundant in different ways so yes um when i was thinking about today's video i sensed the energy of vivian nicholson now vivian nicholson i don't think i don't think my international clients will know about her she was a yorkshire lass and she won the pools and she's very famous for saying she was really famous in yorkshire and all the surrounding areas i think it was the 60s that she won it and she was very famous for saying, I'm going to spend, spend, spend. And she became very famous. She was a pills winner, a woman. And she went ballistic. And she spent, 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 spent. And it just caused her pain. The money didn't cause her pain. But the stories going on in Yorkshire. Oh, she was all right till she got that money. Oh, my God. It was the money destroyed her. It wasn't the money that destroyed her. And actually, I felt her energy come in when I was thinking about today's video. It was her actions. And again, it's about healing our poverty wounds as well. So we just go splurge. So when something does come in, we just go splurge. I've had to deal with that one. You can end up in debt and all kinds of things. So two people win the pools. One says, I'm going to spend, spend, spend. And they do spend, spend, spend. They buy the fast... I think she buy her husband a fast car and he died in it. It was a tragic story. And she's died. She's dead now. And I think she her last home... Correct me if I'm wrong. I'm sure it was a, a terraced house in Castleford or Wakefield. Something like that. Because she'd bought this big house on Garforth Cliff. 
and she lost it all. So you get someone that's that spend, 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 they just blat it and it's gone and it causes them more pain and they end up in a worse place than they did before it. But you also get somebody that wins it and goes, right, what can I do with this? I can buy a nice house. It's not too expensive, so I'm out of my means and I, I'm out of my comfort zone, but I can buy myself a nice house. I can buy myself a nice, simple car because actually the car that I've got is a second-hand one that I'm having to repair repair. But I don't want to get a big zooped up one that I can't, that's too fast for me to drive, that I, I can't manoeuvre and all of that. So I'm going to buy a nice one. And I'm going to look at if I'm going to invest it. And am I going to trade something? Or am I going to put it into my own business? Or I can't, uh, that money then will have rolled on and goes on and becomes a source of abundance to where I'm just going to blast, 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 spend, spend, spend. And... Yes. Did I do it? No, I've put my notes say way forward and cards. Let's go into the cards because we love cards, don't we? This is a new deck and it's called Earth Blessings Oracle by, let me show you the box. Liz Dean. <coughs> it's actually a lot better than it was. Last week it was. Anyway, we move on quite. We do it with health as well. We do it with, I do it. When I'm doing these videos, it's not because I'm perfect, it's because I'm learning too. And rather than be learning it and just keep it to myself like a little deal like that, I'm gonna share it with anybody like some people do. It's like, I need to share that insight because actually it's helping me so it can help you as well. Um, it's like I've said when people still do it, when I did the video about illness, you never, ever, ever say my anxiety, my arthritis, my epilepsy, my cold, my depression, because the minute you say that you own it and you become it and you will be that until you stop saying my, 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 the anxiety, the depression, the pain, the, th it's not mine, it's not yours, don't own it, don't own it, change. May you bless the turning of the leaves. So as I'm doing this video, we're going into, well, we are in autumn now. It's September, so we're heading straight into it. Look at that at the back as well. Do you like that? Change. As we go in, and also with abundance, learn to work with the seasons. So in autumn, what are we letting go of? What mindsets are we letting go of? What objects in our house that what are we holding that we can let go of? Regular clearing out. Because it's not about just buying something, use it. And I'm not talking about that. But it's holding on to things that no longer serve you. It's it's like if some people have thousands of pictures on their phone. And oh, that holiday was so amazing, so I didn't lose them pictures, but it stops another holiday coming in. Does that make sense? It's about letting go of the old. You don't need to let go of everything, but what do you need to let go of in autumn to make way for something else? Mindsets. Let's work through each card and do three cards from each deck and see what they come up with. Conserve, may you find the balance. So, what are we letting go of, but also what are we conserving? So as the world changes and we start looking into home cooking, home baking, home planting, home, not making, doing, mending. Not that. Not where you're darning the same pair of socks over and over again that is just full of darn, but get in the balance. You've put a hole in your sock, you can stitch it, there's nothing wrong with that. But there is something wrong with it if it's just full of holes and we're continuing to darn, when actually the sock has lost being a sock and it's just become a material of darn, if that makes sense. And actually looking at what we do have and being thankful for it. Because if I came to your house now with a big spray of flowers and a chocolate cake and you opened your door and went, oh, and slammed the door shut, some people would actually, um, I'm not going to come again. So if you've got a house that you may 
You know, say if you live in a small house or you live in a council house or you live in a house that's not in a very good area or you live in a house that needs repairs. Do you know how you're going to move? The day you become thankful for it. The day you go, actually, yeah, I love this house. I'm thankful for it. Because whenever you're not thankful for something, you put that out to the universe and they're like, it just can't come in. Gratitude. Okay, so this isn't where I want to be forever, but I'm thankful for it. I'm thankful I've got a roof over my head. And it's the same with the job that you may hate. Twisting it around and going, I'm thankful that I've got this job. It may not pay hundreds or thousands. Well, it pay, pays hundreds. But it may not pay thousands or millions. But at least I've got something. At least I've got something. And this is only a stepping stone. That's it now. I'm going to be here till I die. Yeah. Why, why, are, you, why are you still in your job? I'm here, for, I'm here for the pension. I used to work at a place like that. And I remember my guide saying to me, Claire, girl, that pension that you're all waiting for. It's not going to be there. Right? It's not. Um, you know, and it's getting yourself anchored in these lack mentalities. This is it now till I die. <sighs> Just waiting now. Just waiting. It's finished for me now. No, it's not. No, it's not. A phase of your life has finished. Um, what gifts have the ancestors passed on to you? Because when we talk about generational stuff, we always think of trauma. But what gifts have the ancestors passed to you? Do you know, I've, I'd used this deck this morning on my video on Instagram. If you like my videos on here, you may want to follow me on Instagram, Healing for Ascension, because I do about five videos a week on their daily videos. This card came out and I was like, mm, no, this comes out this afternoon. Alchemy. May you find your gold. Alchemy. That word again, alchemy. May you find your gold. How is your harvest? Signs. May you see the synchronicities. Again, are you switched off? Is it just a day? Do you see the signs of the day? Do you see the signs that your body's trying to tell you? Are you switched off from reality? Are you burying your head in the sand? All of that. So being open. What's this one? Charm. May you see the magic in small things. May you see the magic in small things. I will reiterate it. This isn't this video isn't about manifesting a BMW, an Audi. This is about manifesting something much deeper. A sense of abundance that runs much deeper than money. It includes money, but it also includes charm. And seeing the magic in that council house you've got. Seeing the magic in that job that you've got. That may not be perfect. Seeing the magic in all of it. Even the most traumatic relationships you've got. Because they are a gift. Because the traumatic relationships and friendships that you've got. Are actually teaching moments. Where you can clear your karma. You can clear all that stuff and free. But we don't do it. We'd, oh, it's, why am I getting abused again? Why is it happening to me? Why, why, why? Why? Um, why don't we change that and look at it through the eyes of what are you trying to teach me? What are you trying to show me? What am I meant to learn from this? You are a gift. Could be a horrible abuser. Well, not a horrible abuser. It could be an abuse, a person that's doing bad things. But you are a gift. So what? why are you here? What are you trying to teach me? And they will be trying to teach you something. Let's take another card. Divine, may you find the bliss. Simplicity, may you find the bliss. So let's go to another deck. Oracle of the Seven Energies by Colette Baron reed So three cards on the energy of abundance. Oops. There's about five cards that fell out there. If they're meant to come out, they'll come out again. Three cards, abundance. Oh, okay, you can't make it up. Bearing through. There is enough abundance in this planet. For everyone. Ah, yes, yes, there is, Claire. But now I can get you now, Claire. I can get you now. 
It's not my fault, they're ticking it off of us. You've just done it again, my friend. You've just blocked your abundance because there is enough for everyone out there. It is not them ticking it off of you. There is enough out there. And again, it's about being the alchemist. If we want creation to come in, we all, first we must be a creator. And with the thing is, we are all creators and we're all creating every minute of every day. Creating good stuff, doom and gloom, drama, chaos, love, happiness, harmony, war. We can, we can create all of those in one day. But what are you creating most of? So if you want this stuff to come in, you have to be the creator. You have to realise that the world is in your hands, that the world is your oyster, feeling the world, that you are part of the bigger connection, that you're not just little old you sat in a corner, not connected, that you are part of something bigger and that you play a role in society and that your world is what you make it. How are you seeing your world? Look how she's looking at her world. Is she see what is she see what do you see when you look at your not the world, your world, your life? Does it light you up? Are you proud of it? What have you learnt from it? What has it taught you? What gifts does it keep on giving? How can you change it going forward? We can't do anything about the past. You can do your forgiveness and acceptance work, but your power isn't the power of now, as Eckhart says. Close encounters. This is you in the cage. This is whatever it is that wants to come in, that relationship, that money, that change of abundance. But I'm trapped. But not only am I trapped, but I'm staying trapped because that's where I'm comfortable. Because if I come out of this cage, no, I can't, I can't. But you've got to. You've got to come out of this cage because it's time to be free. Because we're getting all of these close encounters throughout our daily lives. How much of it are we throwing away by not feeling worthy enough? And we're waiting for someone to come and free us from that cage. But what if the person that we're waiting for is actually within us? I mean, really, actually. Healthy people don't want to save other people. Healthy people don't want to save people because healthy people think, no, people should save themselves. I can help you be an assistance. So if you're wanting someone to come in and save you, are they going to be healthy? Are they going to be healthy if they want to come in and save the day? Exposed and revealed. So being honest with yourself and looking at all aspects of your life, your narrative, the stories that you tell yourself. Exposed and revealed. Having a good old look at yourself. Listening to the warning bells of your life. Maybe having to lose it all to find it all. On some level. Next deck of cards. Which is another Colette Baron Reed deck. It's called The Wisdom of the Oracle by Colette Baron Reed. To be fair and balanced, being the middle way. You've won the money, you've got the money. Do you want to be the one that spends, 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 spends? Or do you want to be the one that doesn't spend a penny and lives frugally and has no life? Or do you want to be somewhere in the middle where you can not overspend, but you can spend when you need to spend? It's about bringing balance. And this is the same with all kinds of things. Eating, love, sex, all kinds of things. Are we out of sync are we overdoing? Are we underdoing? Are we overspending? Are we underspending? Let's do another two cards. Abundance. Thinker. The silence. Thinking about what you want. 
that's another thing in manifestations where you have to really be specific. You can't just say, I just want to be a, I just want to be rich. Okay, well, rich to some people could be having an extra hundred pound in their pocket. Rich for some people could be getting a ten pound note that day. You have to be specific. What do I want from life? And when you put out what you want from life, don't do it closed. Like, I want to be rich. You know, I want enough money to be happy, stable and fulfilled. Okay. It is how we use that. A fork in the road. A choice. As we come up, as different countries come up against this fork in the road, where are we going to go with it? Are we going to get to that fork in the road screaming, wailing, in absolute fear or terror? Or are we going to get to that fork in the road and think, I can do this. I'm not going to go into fear with this. Because I know that the world is abundant and I know that this too shall pass. And actually I'm going to turn this into an adventure. I'm going to do something now. I'm going to ask each deck for one card as guidance for healing the abundance wound. Healing the abundance wound. One card. Guidance for healing the abundance wound. Chop wood, carry water. Again, I just want a job. I want a really nice job that makes me happy. Get off your ass and get looking for it then. Get your CVs done. This is the thing with manifestation. You can't just put it out there what you want. You can't just say, I want to move house. And that's it. You've got to be actively putting it out there. You've got to be doing the work as well. Because actually a great big part of manifestation and alchemy is doing the work. So if you want a new job, you've got to be looking for one. You've got to be doing the CV. You've got to be talking to people. You've got to be living in your energy of putting that out into the world. You can't wait for the job. That very rarely happens. It's about manifestations and just writing it in your journal on a full moon and then or a new book or whatever you do and then just leaving it. Manifestation is action. Manifestation is action. Manifestation is action. Action is part of manifestation. So being proactive in your life, coming back to being a human. If I think yeah, I'll just get it, mm, will you? You may do. But actually, do you want to put something in yourself? And again, are you going to the universe? Take, 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 take from the universe. What are you putting into it? A time to go. Let go. So we've done that, Beck. <clears throat> Ask the same question for this deck. Earth magic, quiet in the mind at the bottom, earth magic, grounding. Can you ground in new things? Because if we're not grounded and things come into our life, new energies, upgrades, we can't ground them in. They come into the body or they come into our life and they're like, I can't stay. She's not grounded, he's not grounded. They're all over the place, they're fragmented. Ooh, it's gone. Whatever it was that's gone because we can't ground it. So grounded. Being realistic as well. You know, you can't... <laughs> Manifestation, I want to be the next Kate Middleton. Probably not going to happen. Right, okay, that's not going to happen. Manifestation, I would like to lose weight. I want to change my wardrobe. I want to join a gym. Do you see what I mean? If I said, I want to be the next Kate Middleton. <laughs> Chances of that happening. Let's be realistic. But, okay, fine, right. I'm going to book an hairdressing appointment and go have my hair dyed brown and have it a lot. I'm joking now, but do you see what I mean? It's about being realistic as well. Being realistic. Quiet in the mind. The monkey mind that keeps wittering onto you. You can't do that. You're not good enough. Stillness. Having focus as well and having focus in your life where you're not distracted or easily pulled from your mission. intention may you be called to begin have you seen the have you seen the theme in here it's not all set your intention and then leave it and forget about it it's set your intention 
but you do the work. Oops. Oh, I don't want to do that, Claire. Uh, I want to set my intention that I want to sit down in Costa and just wait for it to come in. Sometimes that can happen. But are you going to work with the universe as a manifester and an alchemist? Let's have a look. Intention. May you be called to begin. May you be called to begin. Realising that your fate is in your hands. That even if bad things happen, we still have power. Resonance. May you be may you tune in to nature's song. Nature's song, the message of nature. Working with the seasons. Coming back to simplicity. Being realistic as well. What's that thing called that businesses do? Is it smart? What is it? What is it? Something like specific, measurable, what's it? I don't know what it is. I'll need to look it up now. Um what does smart mean? Specific, measurable, achievable, relevant and time bound. So it's about working with that. So be specific, measurable, achievable, relevant, time bound. So I want to look like Kate Middleton. Well, oh, that's not going to be smart. It's, that's not saying that looking like Kate Middleton is not smart. She's a very attractive woman. But that's not going to happen for you, is it? But what you can think, well, what is Kate Middleton? She's slim. She's attractive. She's got money. She's got a husband. She's got kids. She's into fitness. Right. So, okay. So be specific. I want to lose weight. I want to go to the gym. I want to change. I'm not talking about copying here. I'm talking something totally different. But I'm just. it's just an example measurable so in time you look back and go did I achieve that no I didn't okay fair enough why did I achieve it did I achieve it and I blocked it out how can I change the question in the future about what I want is it achievable because not everything is achievable we've got to be relevant we've got to be relevant um and time bound yeah I saw one video quite a while ago and it was somebody talking about manifestation. They said you should never have, what's it called, a rainy day pot. Because when you have a rainy day fund, you put that out into the universe that you're going to have a rainy day. What you should have instead is a pot with an extra flow of cash in it. So you're prepared... You're prepared, you're not just spending everything and then something comes in and you can't pay it. But you're not expecting the rainy day. Oh, it's going to be a rainy day. Because there isn't going to be a rainy day. Because you've got an extra account with, the, with an extra flow of money in. See how it changes? So when we say a rainy day fund, or I'm waiting for, I'm saving for a rainy day. Um, that will comes in the rainy day. It all comes in that potentiality for a rainy day. Um, being thankful for what you've got in life as well is alchemy and manifestation. Because often we'll put out, I just want this and I'll be happy. You get it and you're not happy. Looking at that as well. Because often we'll send us, we'll give ourselves these big ideals if I'm slow, I'm going to be happy. If I get the Audi, I'm going to be happy. And you, you get that. You get slim. You get the Audi. You realise you're not happy. So actually, what is that about? What is that wanting about? And again, when you look at it, I'll be like, God, yes, my confidence or my wounding or my self-confidence, my sister's minted. So I feel like I've got to be there. And actually, it's putting so much pressure on me. I feel ill. And I just want to live in a simple house, actually, and have a nice, happy life. There's nothing wrong with that. Um... It's reaching for your own stars. I've got that reach for the stars. Reaching for your own stars, not somebody else's stars. Achieving what you can in your life with what you've got with your experience. You get in an Audi and you get in a, I don't know, a car that's not an Audi. They're still going to get you to the same space. They're still going to get you to the same place. It's the mindset. 
somebody this morning could be picking up their second hand car from a show, I don't know, a car shop out there. And they're so excited because it's the first car or it's the first car they've got since they've left the partner and they're having to start again. Or they're having to go get a rented flat. They're so excited this morning because they're getting the key to that apartment. It's going to be theirs and it's going to be peaceful. There's going to be no abuse in there. They're not going to have to dread the key turning in the lock. And they're so excited to pick those keys up to that council flat or that rented apartment off to that smaller house. Or to that terraced house. But around the corner in the same city, there's someone about to pick the keys up for a mansion. You can both be excited. To, do, you, do you get what I mean? That's abundance. To be proud that you're getting the mansion. To be proud that you're getting the apartment that you're going to be free from. It's, it's, it's fun. Have fun with it. Have fun with it. The person that goes shopping and they spend the day around the charity shops and they get books and trinkets and they've got some nice clothes and they excited when they get home and they get kettle on and they've got a slice of cake and all of that and they're like boom i've had a good day shopping it's going to be the same as the person that goes around all the designer shops in fact sometimes the person that goes around the designer shops they might go actually i'm still miserable i'm still miserable um abundance is very complex it's very complex you know, like you said, you could be that person that's just gone on the charity shops and you feel great. You could have just gone to the library now, you've put your, you, you could have request books, can't you? I know some libraries you reserve them and you've been waiting for these books to come back and they're not yours, they've been out everywhere, they're in the library, librarian brings you, boom, I'm in there. You get your pile of books and you're like buzzing, I'm going to read these. Claire comes on YouTube and she's bought a pile of books. You're both the same. You're both happy with you. Ugh. It's, <laughs> let's think, what well, I'm not, I'm enjoying these examples. Another example. Let me think of another example. Your wedding day. Two women, she wants everything. Brand new, spangly, best ever wedding. But you want a nice, simple wedding with simple cake, simple all of it, but it's, mm, that's still abundance can be abundance as well because maybe she actually is enjoying the fact of that it can be different as well it doesn't have to be attaining the best car the best wedding the best holiday it can be somebody could have gone on holiday that week that i went on that cruise and stayed in a b and b on the front had picnics every day on the beach i don't know whatever and oh that can just be as they would have probably had a better time than i did on an expensive cruise ship it's what is abundance to you? What's going to make you happy? And finding that within those moments and, and growing that. Not sat there on your wedding day going, oh God, my wedding day shit. You know, Sandra, look at her wedding. Remember her wedding? God, oh, my wedding's horrible compared to her. That's me. It's... I've shot my baby and I'm really happy with my baby's in second hand baby girls compared to Chantel whose baby is in the designer stuff. No, that's not the way to be. I'm thankful for my baby. I'm thankful that I've clothed my baby. This baby is mine. The clothes and the clothes that I've got them, worked for, whatever. It's about being proud as well. It's, but not proud as you know, I'm not taking any help. That's not proud, that's blocking. Oh, they're too proud for help. No, they're not proud. They're blocking. They're blocking. Um, it's about being proud. And also as well, yes, letting people help, but not just laying back and letting people do it for you. Taking an active involvement in your life, taking an active involvement in your happiness. Being proud of who you are and where you've come from. Um... Believing everything's possible for you. Seeing the beauty in all situations. <clears throat> Should we do a final card from each deck and then we'll wrap up. Exposed and revealed. Oh, you see, you can't make this up. Great and full. Great and full. Exposed and revealed. 
as this world starts to transition, you're going to see people that get greedy, angry. You're going to see it. You even see it in yourself. So we're going to be seeing those exposures within ourselves and with others as things start to fall away or, and come back together again. So we're going to see a lot of exposure, people standing on. We're seeing it with companies now. Supermarkets charging high for food. What is Lurpak? Lurpak now is £300. In, <laughs> I'm joking. It's not. But Lurpak is it's getting up to the £10 mark. If not, if not, have I read it right that in some supermarkets it's £12? You're going to see it exposed and revealed. So, but, you're ex but they're exposed and revealed so you can see where you're at. Imagine the beauty of making... There's a woman I follow and she lives the 1950s... No, 1940s, 30s life. Well, that, that the olden world. Olden world. And she makes her own butter. And she pats it. And she... she they just live the life like they would pre-war or post-war. Um, and then she wrap, wraps it in greaseproof paper and she puts this bow on it. And it's stored and she gets extra, she gives it to neighbours and they make things. It's the little community of these women that, that live, it's, there's nothing wrong with it. And I just thought, wow, that butter that you put on the table, you've made that. Your love's gone into that butter. Low pack. Do you know what I mean? It's, that's again is a sign of abundance. But also is the rich one that goes up to yell at low pack because I'm worthy. Do you see what I mean? It is both. You can have both. What isn't abundance is going up to the Lurpak section going, oh, that's not abundance. I don't want to make me own butter. That's not, ab that's not abundance. Yeah, I like this video. Final card from this deck. Comfort. May nature be the balm. So finding comfort in nature. Finding comfort in the simplicity. You know, in the UK, we're coming up to autumn and winter. Finding comfort in that woolly jumper. Finding comfort in that hot chocolate. Finding comfort in that book that's from the library. Finding comfort in that wool and needles that you bought from a charity shop. Finding comfort in your five-bedroomed house. And if you can't find comfort in your five-bedroomed house, why? You can have so much fun with this abundance thing. It's unreal. This is a video we can talk about forever. Trust, may you take this leap of faith. May you take this leap of faith after getting to the end of another video with Claire. Abundance. Final card on abundance, please, from this deck. Final card from abundance from this deck. Thinker. The Fates. I'm fated though I'm cursed. That's another thing as well, cursed. That is something else that's coming up more and more in people's lives. Back in the olden days, people would curse people and they would aim for their three vulnerable points. So that was your finances, your sexual organs, so they would make you barren, or relationships, they'd affect your relationships. So if, you know, people are actually more and more sensing there's a curse on them. They'll come to me and say, Claire, there's something off. I know it's not normal. I can feel, or I'm having dreams where I'm seeing the word curse or I'm being told there's a curse. So having all that kind of stuff cleared as well. Um, there is no simple answer. There is no magic wand. The magic wand is within you. So all of that stuff coming up because everyone has that kind of stuff on them from past lives because that's what people did. Um, generational curses as well getting that cleared and again this isn't about going into fear because actually even though it, if it may be there you can still rise above it it's not about going into fear <gasps> god my channel family lines curse or i'm a curse from the past life i'm going into fear because that just adds to it okay yeah that actually rings true does that because yeah I don't know, my dad was an alcoholic, my granddad was an alcoholic. Is dad, yeah, there's a there's a theme playing. There's something not right with my family line, yeah. She's right. Oh my God, don't go into fear about it. Don't go into, it can be released, it can be cleared. Um. So, I've enjoyed this video. Let me know in the comments if you've enjoyed this video. The next one I'll be filming, hopefully will be the Barbara Hutton channeling. Um. 
Interesting. We may even get Vivian Nicholson in at one point. That'll be a good channel to do, actually. Um, update on bookings. Jan January is nearly booked. January is on its way now to be January 2024 is nearly booked. 2023 is booked. January 2024 is nearly booked. So the more that we go into it, the less and less dates and times are available. Um, the next group healing is the 26th and 27th of October and it's healing after narcissistic abuse. It's £22, it's carried over two days, it's a channel, distance channeled healing sent from myself to you. There's no Zooms, classes, courses, links for you to press. All you have to do during those two days is be willing to receive and release as well. And again, if you're one of the ones that have gone through the life traumas, life and traumas, lost bereavement with narcissism or generational trauma and society, that could be causing your one of you that could be one of the causes of your abundance blocks. So get yourself on that group healing. Value yourself enough to do it. Um, to take part in that, you go to the description box beneath this video and or in the comments section and it'll be the pinned comment you'll scroll down a little bit and it'll say next group healing and it'll give all your bum for 22 pound what it is and the dates and then it'll go for more information watch this youtube video if you want more information watch that video because if you email me and say can i have more information about that group healing i'll actually send you that video or in fact no there's actually a recorded message that goes out now with that so then a bit beneath that, there is the link that takes you directly to the group healing. And you pay your money, I get your name, your name goes on my list, boom, you receive your healing on the 26th and the 27th of October. Um, if you want to book a reading with me, a healing session, shamanic session, Reiki session, mentoring session, my website is also below. If you've got questions about spirituality, healing, your life, your life path, or you need some guidance, the mentoring sessions are for that. Um, they're there for guidance, counselling, therapy. Use them for what you need them for. Okay, so there's options on my website for everybody. I think that's it. If you've enjoyed watching me and you want to follow me on Instagram, TikTok, Facebook and Threads, it's all in the description box below. If you like videos, you want to see me doing daily videos, join me on Healing for Ascension. And apart from that, I'm going to go get myself a cup of Yorkshire tea. Thank you for watching. Like, comment and subscribe. Thank you for the comments. Thank you for the subscribes. Thank you for the likes. Thank you for the dislikes. Because dislikes also help the algorithm. Thank you. <laughs> Got to be thankful for everything. Um... Thanks for watching, thanks for sharing, thanks for doing everything, thanks for being you, thanks for having a laugh and yes, if you've enjoyed this video and you want more content, please do subscribe to this channel. Thanks for watching, bye.